Good morning. Well, thank you uh, to be here for this interesting panel about art and politics. And well, I want to, we are going to start in a few minutes, but first the minister is going to tell us some words about the about these topics, about some statements. And well, thank you again, and we are going to start in a few minutes. Thank you. What is the relationship between art and politics? Should an artist engage in political life or would it deprive him of his unique distance perspective? Would it break his artist lens? This question is, is pointless. Intellectual and artists have participated in public affairs since antiquity and in the future it cannot be otherwise. Their time comes at moments of oppression when ordinary political institutions break down or are eliminated by force. Being both an intellectual and an artist, Václav Havel articulated his political opinions throughout his life. He also wrote about what it means to be a dissident. A dissident is a person who only wants to do his normal job, but this is precisely what gets him into trouble with the regimes that are not normal because they restrict freedom. The calling of intellectuals and artists is centered upon truth, and truth is what totalitarian and authoritarian regimes around the world strive to suppress. The conflict is then unavoidable. As long as we believe in the same fundamental nature of human beings around the world, we must insist on the same fundamental concept of human rights, no matter how different world's cultures are. Truth is truth, and a lie is a lie, and relativism of any kind cannot change that. While each and every one of us sees the world from a different perspective, the world out there is still the same world. If a person claims that a politician has stolen public funds, and he indeed has, yet the person gets punished for making that statement, then this is oppression, no matter if this happens in the East or in the West. If a person claims that the environment is poisoned, yet the power elite claims that people under its reign are walking under beautiful skies and breathing fresh air, while no one can see through the smog or drink the water safely, then we know who is lying. This is the case no matter to what extent we refer to cultural specifics. To acknowledge the fact that different cultures imply different human rights concepts is not to say that they have nothing in common. There is at least one common denominator, the old golden rule. Do not do unto others what you do not want others to do unto you. In a society where government's authority relies merely on violence, someone else must take on the mission of guarding common values and defending freedoms. There is no reason to believe that intellectuals and artists should be an exception. Instead, history has many times seen them on the front line of the fight of for freedom. Of course, they have always been individuals failing in that mission because of fear or greed. I feel sorry for the former and disgust for the latter. Human rights are not an abstract concept. By human rights violations, we mean silence and injured people, we mean orphans and wasted talents, people shot by border guards, children incited against their own parents, and babies that were never allowed to be born. We mean a few members of the power elite enjoying their privileges while telling the rest of the nation they are living in paradise in the best of possible worlds. 
as we are reminded by George Orwell in his book 1984, people do sense when there is something wrong with the world they live in. Winston Smith did not know what other places looked like, but he sensed something was wrong. Pain and oppression are against human nature. Even a person of average intelligence can tell that there is something wrong. <clears throat> One cannot forever keep telling the slaves that they are free and happy, just like the captain of a sinking boat cannot deny the Archimedes principle. Throughout the history of mankind, artists and philosophers have demonstrated in their writings and paintings and in many other ways that all people always want the same, a world where no one is a slave, where no one is forced to carry the burden his master wouldn't even touch. I am happy that there are still places where people can debate freely about how freedom and truth can be learned and disseminated. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Minister. And then we are going to start uh, first with uh, some comments from the comments from these artists and intellectuals sharing with us uh, their vision about how are uh, related uh, art and politics. I think it's a really interesting point. And well, after we are going to open to the floor to make comments also and questions to the panelists. I don't know uh, who want to start to talk. Yes? Um, <laughs> okay, hello. Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, uh, I'm going to have to improvise because I'm not uh, really sure what this discussion is going to lead to, of course. But the theme is quite um, clear. It's about um, art, activism and uh, politics and the effects that they, uh, they seem to enjoy between uh, themselves. Now, maybe I'll just start with a small definition and then we can go because... Uh, um, uh, Perhaps you know clarification of terms is uh, is a good thing uh, for the beginning. Uh, I would say that um, uh, we have to understand one thing: uh, art is inherently political. It is always political. It has always been political. It has political aspects, and that what we term as political art uh, only only enhances that particular political aspect of art. It's uh, it's taking up political themes. And uh, it makes, makes these themes uh, its own. Now, activism, there's a difference. Uh, activism follows a political agenda. That means there is an actual goal to the particular uh, activist practices. To achieve something. This is something that political art does not necessarily want to do. I mean, uh, the, the purpose of political art generally is to, is to question, to experiment and to provide, like Herbert Marcus said, uh, anti, uh, uh, an anti-environment to the environment that we know, that we understand, that we think is the truth, like, like Mr. Herman said before, uh, talking about truth and human rights. Well, this is an environment, and in fact it is, it is uh, the role of art to provide an anti-environment so we can understand this. So uh, this is the difference, I would say, between activism and political art. While political art uh, is here to, to, to discuss the, the political themes of our society, activism actually has a political agenda and tries to achieve a goal. I would just maybe add a, a short remark to this. Um, thank you, for, first of all, for having me. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. And I'm really looking forward to this discussion and to the questions you have for us. Uh, I would maybe say that there are, there's a lot of art who is not political, and who is, but which becomes political when it's misused by politicians. It can happen as well. And there, there, there were many, many writers who became, or many artists who became politicians and misused the power 
all the way in the 20th century. And I think for our generation, I, I suppose we are of the similar age, uh, art and the whole culture somehow was very politicized since we were kids. Because, for example, me growing up in Bratislava, very close to the Iron Cotton, on a, in a, on a border to Austria, to Hungary, simply, even as a small kid, as a 12 years old, Almost every message we were getting from the media or from any culture when we visited a theater or a movie in, the, in, the, in a movie cinema, everything was politicized somehow. We were looking for the political messages, even where there were none, maybe. But, but we, we somehow, for me, it was automatic that I expected there must be some, some deeper message. Or we were, yeah, of course, it was not our opinions. Uh, we were looking for some opposition opinions mostly based on ideas of our parents, but, but somehow, I, for, when I today visit schools and speak to, speak to kids about writing and about, uh, about books, about reading, I'm really surprised how many of them say, I, I, I totally hate politics, I, I just don't want to have anything to do with it. It's so boring, uh, because for me this is something which absolutely belongs to my, my life as a, as a creative person. And, and, um, but I do believe that even those people who think they are out of, of political world, somehow belong to this. We are all in it, if, if we want or not. Uh, the, what really changed rapidly from, from the times of, of, uh, of uh, Václav Havel or the generation um, of, the, of, the, of the 80s um, underground and opposition here in, in Czechoslovakia was that we have completely new challenges. Uh, as artists uh, from, the, from the generation of our fathers, or, or not to say our grandfathers. Uh, just to mention, for example, in my, in my field, uh, from the writing, from literature, uh, we have uh, a new, so to say, new enemies, or, or we are um, or new, uh, searching for new oppositions, for example, against corporations such as Amazon. We have now huge initiative in Germany, suddenly 300 writers signing petition to deal with to deal with Amazon and new distribution forms, the way how art is getting abroad, uh, distributed. And uh, so definitely, this, for example, these German writers ha have more to deal with, with a corporation than a German Ministry of Culture. Uh, so, uh, yeah, maybe just to add your, add your comments. I came from China. I think I should tell you um, how Chinese, like, Ch Chinese artists think about this question. Um, but uh, it's bad I switch the channel to Chinese. <laughs> uh, um, I'm a novelist. Um, and originally I thought uh, I will never have to deal with uh, politics and I could only uh, deal with literature. But um, after a certain uh, time I found out that uh, this is uh, almost impossible. And actually uh, almost uh, um, all of my uh, works, um, um, all of my books, they uh, have to, to under, uh, um, uh, go through a uh, process of um, uh, which we would call control. Uh, I have uh, until now published six books. And in each of those books, there were many uh, Chinese characters which were erased before publishing. Uh, which would make up, uh, uh, let's say, one tenth of, uh, uh, um, um, of uh, the content. And in 2010, uh, I have encountered a uh, very uh, serious editor. And actually he banned or he didn't let me to use uh, a lot of uh, very common vocabulary. Uh, for example, peasant. And he thought that, uh, or he implied that this uh, uh, word might have uh, kind of negative meaning. 
比如说帝国主义，呃，那 or imperialism， 啊，比如说河南人，那 or 呃、uh, the people from 河南 province， 嗯、um, ，在我的小说里边，我写过某个某一个人放了一个屁，呃、uh, ，and in one of my novels I've、uh, wrote a sentence a certain person just farted， 然后变的 fart。这个编辑会很严厉的告诉我：“对不起，你不能在这里放屁。Uh, ” And、uh, the editor, he was very serious about that, and he said, "You cannot、uh, let them to make a fur here." 所以呢，我从那之后我就变成了一个就是不我不纯粹的小说家。Uh, and since then, sorry, and since then I became an un. Uh, 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 unrecognized writer. Uh, you know, in China, uh, almost all culture and arts are in the c a n d maybe you have heard that、uh, almost all writers,、um, almost all literature, is、uh, being controlled by、uh, government. Our writers have writers' association. Uh, our writers, they have so-called writers' association. Uh, uh, artists, they have so-called、um, uh, artist association. But all these associations are all in the government's control. But of course, all these associations are being led uh, uh, by the Communist Party. In the past ten years, these writers and artists have created the vast majority of their works. 都是为了歌颂和赞美共产党及中国政府。And、um, in previous,、uh, in, in many previous years, all these、uh, artists and all these writers, they produce、uh, art pieces or works、uh, that were、uh, to glorify、uh, communist party. 比如说，在中国最著名的歌曲之一就叫做《党啊，亲爱的妈妈》。呃 ，one of the famous songs in China is named uh, uh, "Party, My Mother, My Beloved Mother." 嗯、呃，但是在随在这些年，随着互联网的兴起 ，But in all these、uh, recent years uh, with uh, uh, internet coming up. 也有很多作家和艺术家开始呃用自己的创作来批判这样的政治。呃、uh, ，there are many um, um, authors, many writers, or um, um, or artists who are starting criticizing uh, uh, government. 嗯、uh, ，比如说我的一个朋友，一个画家郭建，嗯、uh, ，他在五月份的时候被驱逐离开中国。Uh, For instance, one of my uh, friends uh, named Guo Yan,、uh, who's an uh, uh, who's an uh, artist, uh, a painter, he was uh, uh, pushed uh, pushed to leave the country. Because his most important most important work is he made a painting called "Rice Factory." Uh, and the reason for that was that he made a,、um, a piece of,、uh, of art named、uh, a, a flesh square. He used a 160 pounds of flesh to create a Tiananmen Square. He used a 160 kilograms of meat of, of flesh,、uh, making it、uh, ma making it an, a Tiananmen Square. Of course, it was for 呃、uh, ，描述一九八九年的天安门屠杀。And of course,、uh, with the intention、uh, to sh、uh, to show or to describe uh, uh, things which happened on uh, uh, Tiananmen Square in uh, 1989。还有更多的作家、艺术家呃、uh, 加入了这种呃、uh, 反抗的行反反抗的队列。Uh, And there are much more artists and writers who have entered uh, this uh, this uh, counter or uh, anti uh, anti behavior. 实际上，我要说的是，在自由世界，一个艺术家可以只关心自己的作品。
what I want to express here is that in uh, free times, or where you are, where you, you are living in freedom, uh, an artist is uh, restrained, or he has he is only dealing with himself. But in China, such a artist, but in China, such a country, um, you can't make your work completely with the political and social divide. But in countries like China, it is very difficult to make your work completely with the political and social divide. But in countries like China, it is very difficult to come out uh, with a uh, art piece that would be uh, completely uh, without any uh, links or uh, or uh, binds to uh, uh, to the government. Okay, I want to. Uh So thank you for this very interesting experience, and uh, I want to tell a word to the speech of Michael Chvorecki. He uh, spoke about his own experience on the totalitarian side of uh, Iron Curtain in Bratislava. Uh, I grew up in southern Bohemia, very close to the Austrian border, you know, and I have the same experience. I know from my own from my own experience how important it was. This space of freedom, through, for example, the Austrian television at that time, we we were able to watch the Austrian news and even the art. And this uncontrolled art was a great space of uh, uh, of liberty, of of freedom. You know, which was uh, which was so important for us, like a alternative school. And I think it's a great role of media, the great role of art for all of us. Yeah, and it's our own experience. Yeah, this. Space Space of freedom through media, through art, is uh, according to me of one of the very, very, very important elements. Well, I want to mention some of the points that have been uh, talking in this round. And first, I want to mix something that you said at the beginning about the agenda, the difference between the art and activists. And, but at the same time, I want to also to use uh, one of the points that you mentioned in your speech, human rights. And then it is possible to uh, split human rights for a political agenda? Do you think that is, it's possible to, to don't have the, the point of human rights in a political agenda? And then do you think that in some way always the artist cannot be uh, in relation with some different views about ideological uh, approach to the society, do you think? Um, I understand your first question, but uh, can you rephrase the second one? Yes, the, 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 the second part is, in general, the different ideologies have a different approach to the reality. But the human rights need to be like a, a key point in all the ideologies, I suppose. Well, um, I think it's art, art's role actually to question even the concept of human rights, which which kind of refers to your first question. I mean, of course, uh, of course, in a situation which is uh, a bit more readable, which was our situation before 1989, which is a situation uh, in China right now, in Belarus, in Russia, uh, which is uh, sadly becoming uh, or, or retrograding to another kind of a totalitarian regime and uh, that's too bad and uh, there there it's the situation is different it's much more clear and of course uh, of course it is a responsibility of the artists to 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 take up the flag of human rights i mean when we're talking about people um, people having having um, the, the the very basic liberties uh, uh, this is something that that has always been a theme for artists i mean uh, i would say uh, at least since 19th century when art taken up, uh, has taken up uh, political agendas much more explicitly. Uh, but uh, but, but in, in countries like ours now, where, or let's say Switzerland or Western Europe, um, uh, things have become a bit more complicated for, uh, for artists, let's say. Uh, I, I could say a trope, uh, I could say that um, uh, art actually strives when, when we're not enjoying uh, a time of war, to be ironic. Uh, so, so artists do actually at that point have um, a responsibility to question things like human rights. I mean, what is it human rights when, for example, I mean, if we're going to go to an extreme and we're going to say, okay, so 
so we're going to be uh, taking a stand for human rights. But, uh, but what about animal rights? You know, at, at some point, human rights cross uh, animal rights. This is what uh, Mr. Herman said before. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. But does that include animals, for example? I mean, this is just an example, but somebody can ask this. An artist can ask this. And uh, it's actually the role of artists lately uh, that they appropriate other professions. They become uh, amateur scientists, so they become politicians, journalists. And this is, this, is the, the, this is the role of art in Western society at this point where we have no uh, explicit oppression. But we have to question, uh, question concepts and ideologies just as uh, human rights is. It is an ideology, albeit a good one. Okay. What do you think? Well, I think uh, the artist should not be the only one protecting the human rights. Uh, it's, uh, it should be all of us, citizens uh, of any country. And uh, from my own experience, I can tell you that um, uh, growing up as a small young teenager in a communist Czechoslovakia and then switching to a democratic Czechoslovakia, which split it undemocratically into Czech and Slovak republics, me suddenly becoming citizen of Slovak Republic, which I was opposing to uh, at the beginning, I was really disappointed how many, at that time, at the very difficult period for, for Slovakia as a young, young state, the youngest state at that time in Europe, 20 years ago, how many artists, how many journalists collaborated with the Mečia regime at that time. And actually, I was, it was the citizen movement, uh, which later, some five years later, made a change and, and, and contributed that we, we, we were able to later join the EU and, and become a European mem uh, Union member. And uh, in this way, I don't think that the artists are somehow spe special beings. Uh, they should be part of this civic society, which are, we are so struggling to create in, the, in this part of the world. It's simply lots of those dreams we had uh, in the Velvet Revolution, we are now uh, remembering very soon. Uh, it's 25 years since then. Um, just very few points from example of the programs, of the very initial programs of these movements were any, any time fulfilled. For example, separation of the state and the church, which is for example in my country a huge topic and also a huge topic of uh, artistic expression. And uh, we are still dealing with censorship on many levels. And uh, so I think this, this fight is never won, but and, uh, there was a lot of progress done already. But, but um, and human rights, I think this is something we should have in constitution and we have it, but we should keep an eye on it and protect it. And uh, we, we know Slovakia has a very modern constitution, but there are still ways how to influence it and, and how the system of law is not functioning. And even for the artists, uh, uh, right now, as, as we are talking today and tomorrow, there will be an extremely important decision for a free media in my country taken, uh, dealing with the, I think, the only last really independent newspaper we have, in the, which is called SME, and which should be sold on an oligarch group called Penta. And uh, with this step, uh, I think for many of us, I am writing for this paper as well, and many other writers uh, from Slovakia and abroad, and uh, this is another step in how we, well, I mentioned the new challenges we have as, as, as creative people, and this is one of them. How can we deal with this new sort of control over media? This is, this is what happened in Czech Republic, and this is now coming to Slovakia as well. And the last three newspaper is somehow maybe going to get sold, and, and so I see myself as someone who will have to make a, make, a, make a decision. So am I going to continue to write for them when they are now in the new hands? Or am I leaving them uh, as well? Um, this is something that uh, we will have to, and as every, every person somehow has to decide for, for, for himself. He's going to fight for his, for his ideas, for his opinions. I'm sorry, just one question. You have censorship in Slovakia? Yes, we have many ca cases of censorship. For example, this company Penta, which I mentioned, which is going to buy SME, cancelled the publication of a book called Gorilla. About the, uh, for half a year, they were able to stop the publishing of this book, which is a new sort of corporate censorship you have in many Eastern European countries. It's corporate censorship. It's not political censorship. But we had a censorship of a, of an exhibition. It's controlled by the owner, owner of the media. But we had, a, we, 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 and that's we had a very, very big problem. You're right. Yeah, that's. But we had also another cases of censorship. Uh, we had a cancellation of an opera piece in Seattle just because the, one of the singers were, so to say, smoking marijuana. We had a cancellation of an exhibition 
uh, where, where there were some naked, naked uh, male uh, nudes uh, uh, in, a, in an open space in Bratislava. It sounds funny for many people, but it's it's very real thing in in many Eastern European countries, unfortunately. Do you want to say something about that? Yeah. Um, in China, very interesting thing is that now more and more people are In uh, China, there's one very interesting issue regarding this. Uh, there are more and more people. Uh, uh, Thinking of dogs' rights. Uh, because uh, they would uh, uh, stand on a uh, highway, uh, stopping or having big, uh, a big truck there, stopping all the traffic. In China, 都是一个几乎不容挑战的话题 And on all uh, uh, servers uh, or, or social uh, uh, media networks in China uh, uh, dogs' uh, uh, rights are uh, one of uh, the questions which are almost unomitable 但同时我们知道中国有计划生育制度 But in the same time uh, you know that in China we have so-called planned uh, uh, one family, uh, one, one child, planned birth control. We have a legal system that can be locked up for a We also have uh, this uh, 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 system of uh, labor camps, which you know, uh, for example, from uh, the Wei Qingsheng, the Chinese dissident. We also know about things which are happening in the uh, province in Uyghur uh, autonomous uh, region of uh, Xinjiang or Tibet. There were 133 Tibetans who have uh, inflamed themselves. <laughs> But all these things which I was talking about, actually there is nobody interested in these. The people are more interested in the dog's rights. Well, you were mentioning one word that I want to uh, use to uh, make the next question. is control. In general, we have in a totalitarian system, the, the, the regimes are always trying to control not only the individuals, if not also all the structure, the social structure. But as you were mentioning, not only in the totalitarian regimes are people uh, caring about control. And I want to ask you how you see that art can break this kind of framework that sometimes we have in our societies, and how we can use new media, internet, and all the tools that we have to try to break these controls using art. Because sometimes art can become a kind of form of entertainment, just entertainment. But also art can be a way to break these frameworks. Like, what do you think about that? Yes, there's, uh, there's many ways art can do this, and this is in fact one of the, one of the in inherent roles of, uh, of art. Of course, um, lately, many of you might disagree because it's become uh, very commercialized. Uh, when you go to the Venice Biennial, uh, you see it's just a big, big huge uh, uh, mega show uh, where everything that has been exhibited is just uh, costs uh, incredible amount of money. In fact, the last time there was a big uh, Chinese section when, the, when there was a, uh, a 
exhibited, you could see a lot of political works, actually, yeah, yeah, but yeah, only, yeah, I would say, uh, and maybe uh, my colleague can comment later, uh, they were political to an extent. So uh, this kind of um, making fun of Mao waving at the crowds, uh, that has become somewhat acceptable, and uh, this is the way that um, society, and especially um, any kind of repressive society, uh, tries to negate art and, the, and, and its power by legalizing it partially. And uh, uh, when you're speaking about um, about some kind of inhibition, censorship, etc. The worst kind actually, well, of course, uh, unless we're talking about very difficult situations like China, uh, totalitarian countries, that uh, makes me kind of ashamed to speak about the uh, role of artists uh, uh, from the point uh, of um, you know, living in Prague and Czech Republic where, where we are free. But the, the, the most ultimate way to actually control artists is uh, by internalization of uh, censorship, by forcing you to, sen uh, to, to actually exercise censorship on yourself, which is something that, uh, that is very, uh, it's a very powerful way to do it. And um, I don't know, I can give you a very, very, uh, simple example of, uh, from one of our projects which we have done in uh, the year 2000 which was a uh, time of freedom here and this project was uh, called um, a gallery of established nomenclature and um, uh, we were kind of concerned with uh, with people not really minding uh, the, the the totalitarian past and not thinking of uh, our history our recent history not minding the fact that politicians which were representing uh, the this totalitarian past they were actually uh, communist leaders back before before the revolution they were uh, engaged in uh, this uh, the, the totalitarian politics which we had termed as criminal but they were still in power at the time of the year 2000 uh, uh, what we did is we took this information which was widely available by media uh, it was it, we did not find any kind of secret information it was completely it was completely um, uh, public uh, we just did a research in newspapers and concentrated in a gallery of port portraits of about 36 of these uh, persons, which were politicians, were minister of foreign affairs, minister of industry, etc., and concentrated them into a gallery space. So it was a kind of a informational sculpture. And um, uh, the reason for this, we were kind of afraid that nobody actually cares anymore about this and does not want to review history. What happened was quite the opposite, and, um, and uh, well, uh, information that was widely available uh, in media suddenly by reforming it into a, a sort of a, a gallery project had sprung uh, great reactions, and there was, a, there was a lot of debate about this. Now, what happened next is that the gallery where we, uh, where we showed this had lost its uh, main sponsor, which was the, the Budvar from Budjevice's brewery, and uh, that was a million and a half a year, which actually killed the gallery. Now, at this point, we had, uh, we had already several other partner galleries which wanted to show this project, and it did then get showed. But then uh, some of these galleries, which were sponsored by state money, like the gallery in Brno, uh, they called us up and said, sorry guys, uh, we're not going to show it because, uh, you know. And, and this is the kind of subtle ways that uh, in Western or democratic societies, uh, uh, the, you know, the powerful exercise control. And of course, uh, the, the only, um, the only, uh, only way an artist can actually react to this is, is, to, is to meet it head on and, and, uh, and, and, and to attack these notions. This is a responsibility of all of us that uh, think ourselves as artists. You were asking about the role of new media, maybe of internet, as I, if I understand it right. Well, I think especially for such a small country as Slovakia, which is a country of five million people, like a smaller Chinese city, um, for us it's extremely important to have internet and new media. And as I was mentioning, this, this uh, sellout of the daily paper SME, which really uh, concerns me a lot as well, it's the cost for this is exactly this very small market. We are, we, are, we are dealing with a book market or media market, which is really very small comparing to German or French or not to mention the US. And uh, in countries like this, I think that's why internet became such a hit, such, a, such an issue in, in Slovakia. So many people blogging, so many people reading, blog, reading blogs. 
that uh, they were looking for alternatives. You cannot, you can f cannot finance the print media in a, in, a, in a small place like this. And I think that's why it's, it's, really, it's really popular. On the other hand, it's exactly internet which helped to spread extreme nationalism in my country as well and in the in the in other countries such as Hungary, for example, our neighboring country. The, the rise of the um, right extremist Marian Kotleba, who became, a, who became a mayor of the, of the middle Slovakia, who is, he comes from the former neo-Nazi scene, uh, he was only possible due, thanks to internet. He, has, he had no billboard campaign, no TV ads. He had only his fan community. He's perfectly connected on the social networks and he really is offering the people what they want to hear. So um, it sounds almost like an art project, but it's real. It's a very real threat we have. And uh, this is something what, for example, I think that our culture is not really still able to respond enough, that we have really the rise of many very right-wing racist extremists who are becoming the mainstream in the, in the Eastern, former Eastern Europe. And, uh, and this is also due to internet, because somehow uh, there, everything seems equal, and uh, his opinions, so to say, um, his view of the world it became a mainstream in, uh, uh, compared to other, other political views. So, so that is, this is very scary, and uh, it's much more difficult to react to new media, because they are spreading, so to say, virally very often. You don't need to have a lot of big money to, 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 get, to get spread when you have interesting content for some people. So I'm, I'm a big fan of internet. I use blog, I use Facebook. I, 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 I'm blogging for many years, but um, I also see the other side. And uh, so I'm, I'm not just techno-optimist. I'm also trying to find a, be a techno-realist. And uh, this is not easy in this part of the world. I think that the very important control is even the control of my own conscience. Because uh, I think that uh, we have to live like uh, free human beings. And uh, when we will think and handle free, I think that we will be able to find out the ways uh, how to realize our visions. The control coming from outside, according to me, is not so important like the inner control of uh, our conscience. And it's the uh, final arbiter of our handling, of the quality of our life. And because of that, according to me, it's very important this uh, own uh, internal cultivating process, you know, to be a strong personality, strong human person, and uh, with uh, deep, uh, with the deep roots. And uh, the totalitarian regimes are persecuting the churches and religion communities because of that, because, because that, you know, because they don't want to uh, have such uh, matured human beings, but uh, like a, a crowd of penguins or something like that. And I think that this cultivation of our internal control, our internal, our conscience is really a very, very important element. Um, maybe uh, 10 days ago, I have met a Chinese artist, uh, Ai Weiwei. Uh, and he told me uh, that uh, his uh, works should be uh, seen by, or that they should be displayed to more Chinese. But uh, actually, uh, it is uh, almost impossible for Chinese people to see any of his uh, um, artworks. We can even say that the Chinese people do And actually, we can even say that, uh, that among uh, the Chinese population, there are not a dozen, not a, not, not a few uh, Chinese people who would even know Ai Weiwei. When we talk so, while speaking of uh, how to use social media uh, tools uh, to tackle a totalitarian, uh, 更应该记住一点, 就是这个集权政府, 他们, 
更会使用新的媒体，更会利用网络。Uh, so we should be aware of one point that the totalitarian governments、uh, they are much better in using social media tools than us. 呃，在中国，我们不能使用 Google， 不能使用 Twitter、Facebook、YouTube， 这些全都被忽略、被被屏蔽了。呃、uh, ，In、uh, China, we、uh, cannot uh, use uh, Google, Facebook or YouTube,、uh, and all、um, actually all these uh, uh, pages are filtered out. 甚至连 Gmail 都不能使用。Or、sorry, Twitter,、uh, and we、uh, cannot even use、uh, Gmail. Um, in China, the most popular social media, like the microblogs, the microblogs,、mm -hmm. uh, the most uh, <coughs> popular uh, social media in、uh, China are, are so-called Weibo or microblogs. This has already. Uh, and uh, there are more than 500 uh, uh, million people who are registered with one of these softwares. 事实上呢，在这里你很难发出一点呃、uh, 让共产党不喜欢的声音。Uh, so uh, it is uh, very difficult to,、um, in such an environment,、uh, to speak out a、uh, voice that would、uh, be not uh, uh, in line with Communist Party. They every day are publishing dozens of articles, dozens of pictures. Each hour they are erasing.、Uh, Big numbers uh, of uh, of uh, chapters uh, of um, uh, or uh, of uh, uh, of these blocks. Um, 大量的，我估计有大概有有超过一百万个账号被强迫注销。Uh, there were more than one million uh, of accounts that were deregistered. 呃，也包括我本人的十几个账号。呃、uh, ，including uh, uh, more than ten、uh, accounts which were my own. Well, now I think it's let's open the debate to the floor. Some of you want to make a question. I have a hand here. Hi, um, Freddy from Venezuela. I want to ask you,、um, um, especially the two of you from the Czech Republic and and Slovakia, what was the the role and the the participation of the artist movement in the freedom of Slovakia and the Czech Republic against the totalitarian system? What was the role of artists in the? Well, I think it was fundamental at the very beginning.、Um, Yes, surely you know the name of Václav Havel and others from his generation,、uh, who somehow, which created, so to say, the dissident scene,、uh, opposition in the 70s and 80s, in the times of so-called normalization of Czechoslovakia, which actually was then or denormalization,、um, so to say, step back to the totality under Soviet, Soviet occupation, and、uh, so in this way. You really can say they playwrights, writers, visual artists created such a subcultures of different kinds, which were somewhere very lively, but really were spreading all the way from the west of Czech Republic all the way to the east to the Košice. You, you had some small cells. Sometimes they were called called the cells of positive deviation, so to say, of uh, of uh, the people who try to stay in opposition to to this. And they were those who started the movement of.、Uh, The democratic change in the November of 1989,、uh, so-called Velvet Revolution,、uh, which, if it was really a revolution for some, it was too velvet, so to say, and then, but it was a, a change.、Uh, the, the problem afterwards,、uh, and there are may, others maybe more competent who will be also visiting this Forum 2000 talking about this, was what happened afterwards. Like how we how we were dealing with the situation and this change that happened when when the, this this、uh, dissent came to power, and especially I, I will now switch to to the case of Slovakia,、uh, it turned out to be extremely、uh, problematic,、uh, basically because of、uh, 
inability of most of the pe people at the power to give up the power, who switched to economic power from the politi political power mostly. So they tried to establish as economic, economical power and also with inability to deal with the secret police and their, and their powers. So uh, Slovakia at, at, the, at this foundation, uh, after separation from Czechoslovakia, was not really a democratic state. It had the fundamental failures uh, in its birth and it took many years to really make it a fundamental European modern state. Uh, we were really on the brink to become something like a Belarus today, or uh, Weiss, Russland, or, or any other country. Uh, luckily, Slovak people as a nation somehow, were in, and with the minorities we have, were able to get together and fight for, for freedom, fight for their rights. But actually, I myself became proud to be citizen of Slovak Republic first in 1998, also five years after the official establishment of this state, because when we defeated Mečiar in the free election, uh, because Mečia really was a typical post-communist uh, bureaucrat and, and, uh, and uh, on the brink to a dictatorship. So this transformation process turned out to be much, much more complicated than we ever thought me my, as a 13-year-old boy, but also many adults and many people who were actively taking part in it and as politicians. Uh, so, um, and it's still over. It's, it's still something which is very, very open. We, um, on the power in Slovakia, we have more, most of our leading politicians are communists and they were active members of nomenklatura. So in this sense, I don't know who won the, the, the Velvet Revolution. In, uh, in any case, uh, we are a free country now and we are, it's, the Slovak story is also a success story in this, in this way. And uh, also Slovak art scene is so free as it was never in its history and never so lively. It's really quite amazing what's going on there. But uh, it's really a much, much more painstaking process than we all expected, I think. Any other question? Yeah, I'm Chris Hadel. I uh, speak on behalf of Ali. Uh, that's Art Lobby Europe. That's uh, an association of artists in Europe. We created uh, because of the disastrous situation for art creation in Europe. And actually, I wanted to ask some question to Mr. Minister Herman, but he left. So uh, it's uh, very funny to have a democratic and open discussion without one of the main, uh, well, uh, uh, protagonists. So. Let me allow, so I would like to come back to the point. I think you mentioned it, uh, Mr. M Michka. Uh -huh. okay. um, the Brno thing. Uh, I think it is very typical for Europe, for the liberal current Europe, that um, censorship and um, also, um, uh, well, all kind of um, um, uh, censorship yeah, is exerted by the few institutions which are holding the key of uh, whom to publish and whom not in the field of arts. Yeah? So we have three problems. One is money problem, because much of this is connected to money. Yeah? You mentioned it as well yeah, with your newspaper. Yeah? Uh, but there's another side of money. There are the official artists, they're doing well because they are connected to the establishment. But then there are thousands of others who would like to create, yeah, who would like to create art and who are excluded from precisely uh, a lack of money. So my question to Minister Herman was, how much money do you dedicate in your budget, yeah, in your state budget, and, and compare it to the whole state budget? I give you the number for the EU Commission. It is 260 million per year for all of it, for art, education, Erasmus, and so on, 260 million per year from an from a overall budget of about 100 billion. Yeah? So this is just ridiculous. The little, the little piece of, 
of, of, of, of breadcrumb they leave for the art and for culture. Yeah? So this is not acceptable. Yeah? And this is why we created Ali, because we want to gather, we want to organize, and we want to fight against this. Because the point is, and that would be another question to Minister Herman, yeah? uh, is Europe not... What is Europe? Yeah? How, do you, how can you define Europe without art creation? Yeah? Uh, how, how do you define yourself? Yeah? Uh, 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 look at your symbols. Did look at 3,000 years of art creation. Everything is connected to this. Yeah? And today, in, the, in, the, in, in, a, in a period when uh, money creation, we never had so much money. Yeah? Uh, uh, you have a minister who is a billionaire. Yeah? Uh, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah? I think in Slovakia you also have billionaires. Yeah? So we have money all over. We never had so much money, but we don't use it. Yeah? We use it for kitsch, for trash, for rubbish. Yeah? And the people are spending the time on Facebook and, and the stupid internet games. Yeah? And that's it. Yeah? And this is, this is a problem. Yeah? Uh, so my suggestion is more funds for, for arts, uh, art creation, um, open forums, open forums without censorship. There are some experience like this, for instance, in Paris. Yeah? Um, uh, and, uh, of course, fighting nepotism, uh, such as this uh, famous uh, capital of, uh, art, uh, no, capital of culture. Yeah? Uh, now you have it in Pilsen, before it was in Istanbul, in Marseille, and so every time it is a pure matter of nepotism, of clientelism, of friendships, and it means it's an exclusion of the majority of art creators. Thank you. Sorry for being long. Thank you. Any comments or what he's saying, he mentioned? Do you want to make a comment? Do you want to make a comment? Uh, or, or not? <laughs> well, there, there was no question the asked, actually. Uh, there was no question yeah, no asked, question. really. I mean, sure, it's, uh, he's right. There's, there could be more money going into culture, but uh, and of course you have nepotism, and that's, but that's human nature, you know? We're kind of like this, and <laughs> like it or not. So, we're, of course, uh, it's up to us to kind of try to, you know, fight it, uh, fight for, to make it better, a little bit better, it's within our possibilities. But yeah, that's, that's all you can say to that, I think. Okay. There is one lady here and there. The I'm interested in the human rights issue. Because it seems to me it's not only human rights which is paramount and fundamental to the arts, but also equal opportunities. And I'm just curious, as a mongrel, half Czech, half English returnee to the Czech Republic 10, 11 years ago, how you see the representation of women because I don't see much in front of me. And I just wonder how strong women are in these key decisions and totalitarian states in 2014. I think we should have a, a woman uh, among us to answer this question, mm -hmm. really. <laughs> okay. One lady here. Maybe somebody from the audience? Some lady? Nobody want to collaborate. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to say that I really do appreciate the question and I'm glad it was vocalized over here because it's true to say um, 25 years after the revolution uh, feminism or gender equality is still being a dirty word over here. Um, we've been told for so many years that we are equal 
that we can't really stand any more those issues over here, which is a pity since uh, gender equality is a huge thing in EU agenda. And I would love to see more sort of discussion over here, either regarding women in art or politics or decision making. But I do not think that it's, we need women to answer those questions. You gentlemen are uh, fairly present in uh, the arts, so I'm sure you know whether there are any women uh, sort of uh, co-artists uh, and uh, what, what the situation is like. So I do think that you can you know, answer the question, to be honest. I will be, I will be very happy to try to do this. You know. If there is no uh, women artists sitting here, it's not our fault. It's, it's you have to ask the organizers. But dealing with these issues, dealing with these issues, I am I am one of those who I really strongly support LGBT rights in Bratislava. I'm, one of, I, I'm probably the only writer who was ever on the stage of the Pride in Bratislava from the very beginning, from the very first Pride, which was supposed to be cancelled by our mayor at that time five years ago, and I'm. One of my big issues of my work and my writing is to fight against the religious fundamentalism which is on the rise in Slovak Republic. This is a major issue we are dealing with. Uh, right now we have a re new referendum on the table, uh, right now by the, by the uh, co uh, Constitution Court, if it's not really against again, basic human rights, the questions in this referendum, which is the fundamentalist uh, movement trying to initiate in, in Slovakia. This is something concerning me very deeply. Um, it's just the thing, it's a very, it's a very complex issue. And of course, um, I think one of the very important things which were happening after the Velvet Revolution in many countries of Eastern, uh, former Eastern Europe was the rise of gender studies, for example, in the universities. We never had so many gender studies in, in Slovak Republic as we have now. I think on five faculties. Uh, we had a powerful and very good uh, feminist magazine called Aspect and a, and, a, and a book publishing house, which I deeply appreciate, which I cooperate with, and many of my colleagues. And uh, so this is really happening. This is, this is a very lively scene. Uh, also, people working in this field are hardly fighting for, for their say because it's, it's really not easy in countries like this. And uh, Slovakia is a very conservative, very Catholic country. And uh, many of them were really threatened by, by, by so many uh, voices from, from the fundamentalist fields. So uh, this is something where we are on really just beginning to, to somehow uh, uh, being part of this, of, this, of this huge movement in Europe. And, and, and uh, there we could talk about the inequality in payment of, of women, also in arts. Uh, but I have to tell you, on the other hand, that um, and I also wrote about it many times that one of the fields where women made a huge contribution to Slovak art is literary translation. We have excellent female translators of world literature into such a small language as Slovak language is. From, uh, and you, you would find them in the visual art scene and in, and, and in writing, in theater scene. So uh, they are there and they are uh, very present and, and I don't think that this is something which is forgotten in, on, uh, even on this stage. It's just that of course the topic is, is huge and, and very wide and we just can deal with small aspects maybe of, of, of all that complex issues our countries are dealing with. Thank you, but thank you for this remark. Uh, well, thank you for your answer. I'm hoping that the organizers next year probably will uh, reflect the fact that you have so many great uh, women in arts and will invite someone to the uh, to the conference. But I think there are lots of them in other panels uh, during these three, four days, so you will have a chance to, to speak to them and listen to them. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I was just wondering, because I wanted to initially ask a question to Mr. Murong, if it's possible. Uh, am I allowed to? Mm -hmm. okay. um, I wanted to ask Mr. Murong if he would be so kind and uh, tell us a few words or his opinion what does he think about the contemporary 2014 Hong Kong so-called umbrella revolution? Um, it is really, I would love to hear some of his opinions if he wouldn't mind. Thank you. Uh, 
嗯，十天之前，呃、嗯，我到中环、金钟和旺角都去看了一下。呃、嗯，十天之前，呃，哦 ，sorry， 呃 ，ten days ago I first visited the uh, central admiral、uh, admiralty and the Wang Chai region in Hong Kong or district. 啊，在那之前，呃，中国的 CCTV 还有 People's Daily 把这一场运动。形容是一场非常危险的、有暴力倾向的运动。And uh, on Chinese Central Television and People's Daily and other Chinese、uh, media,、uh, the activities there were described,、uh, described as very dangerous and violent. 但是我在现场发现，呃，当当时的秩序非常良好。But actually, on spot, I have seen that、uh, the situation is, is, is very good. I think Hong Kong people in this movement are more proud of themselves than they are on daily. I think that the people of Hong Kong were behaving much better than in their normal life. They will take a cup of tea and ask each person if they need it. Uh, they were offering biscuits and water to um, um, everybody. 即使在最拥挤的人群中，他们也会流出通道来。And in those places、uh, where most people were, they've uh, uh, they've made the special corridors、uh, for people passing by. 还有一些呃年轻人，还有一些非常漂亮的女孩，会帮助那些行动不便的人。And、um, the young people, especially the very nice,、uh, very good-looking、uh, girls, they were、uh, helping to、uh, disabled people or to people who uh, uh, had their difficulties with、uh, getting around. So I was a little sad that I didn't take my umbrella. So uh, actually, uh, I was a little bit. Uh, 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 Ashamed that I didn't take my、uh, my own、uh, my own stick with me. Um, Or, I thought it's a pity I didn't take my、uh, stick with me. 因为德国记者一直跟着我，就是我们在一起。嗯、uh, ，because uh, I was uh, together with a German journalist. 他对我说，他曾经见过德国的、土耳其的、希腊的群众运动。And he told me that he he's been to uh, German, uh, uh, Turkish, and uh, uh, Greek uh, demonstrations. 但是从来没有见过规模这么大，而且秩序这么好的呃示威游行。But uh, he told me that he had uh, never uh, seen uh, such a big uh, demonstration with such uh, such a public order. 但是当我走在人群中，我听到这些青年学生在喊一些口号，包括“这是我们自己的香港，我们要自己来救，自己香港自己救。”呃 ，But I've heard there the young people shouting, uh, 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 shouting sentences uh, like "This is our、uh, Hong Kong, we have to uh, uh, save it by ourselves." 我突然会想到了1989年的天安门广场。And hearing this,、um, I've uh, thought of uh, 1989 and Tiananmen Square. 事实上，几乎每个人都在想，当时的每一个人都会想到这个问题：共产党会不会再把坦克开到香港？ Uh, because I think、uh, this came up on everybody's mind.、Uh, will a communist party take their tanks and shall they drive in? 但是我想的是。假如中国共产党这么做了，全世界的这些国家，有几个会像一九八九年那样宣布制裁中国 ？But、uh, even if、uh, or if this would be happening, how many、uh, countries would、uh, like in those days they uh, 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 they would put sanctions on China? 事实上呢，在现在在香港有许多人都在劝学生离开街头。嗯、um, ，And even、uh, in today's Hong Kong, there are、uh, many people uh, trying to persuade uh, the young people there to leave the streets. 但是
。我更关心的是，假如他们现在就这样离开，没有任何成果就离开街头，那未来的香港会变成什么样子？ So I'm thinking if、uh, they would leave like this without、uh, achieving any goal,、uh, what the future of Hong Kong、uh, would look like? 事实上，香港现在所要求的并不是特别的呃昂贵的水晶鞋。And、uh, so, so what the people in Hong Kong、uh, are claiming for, this is not. Something、uh, special. It's not a, a crystal shoe. 而是一个被侵犯的一个姑娘在请求歹徒住手。Uh, but uh, it's a、uh, it's a small girl which is just、uh, asking for a small favor. 在过去的这些年，香港的新闻自由，啊、uh, ，香港的生活方式。在一九九七年之后，都已经受到了影响，或者发生了巨大的改变。Uh, because， 呃，一九九七年，哎，一九九七年，香港回归。呃、uh, ，because， 呃、um, ，before 1997， actually most of the things like the freedom of， 呃、uh, ，journalism， 呃、uh, ，the， 呃，呃。Freedom of speech， they all had， 呃，呃，呃， they， they， they were influenced a lot。事实上，嗯、呃，那问题是对于我们在座的人，对于自由世界的人们，能为香港做些什么？嗯。呃、uh, ，since then, so, um, but the key question is what the people, uh, what the democracy or democratic people here sitting here, what can we do for Hong Kong? Yeah. That's the question. Yeah. We have time for probably one. Or two short questions. I think one here, and the other on the other side. My name is Talitha Brower. I'm a photographer based in Berlin, and I have a question as well for Mr. Murong.、Um, Mr. Daniel Herman spoke about the cultivation of an internal conscience, and、uh, from what you described in China,、um, it sounds like it's easier for people to identify with. Uh, the dogs' rights than all of these bigger、um, impositions, like controlling the size of a family.、Um, my question is: is that, Does that come out of fear from what the government would do if they speak up against other human rights? And what is the role of an artist、um, or the artist in helping people cultivate this internal conscience、um, and living in freedom? Thank you. 嗯，你来自德国，啊、嗯，据我所知呢，在一九三三年到一九三六年的希特勒德国期间，嗯。Uh, you are coming from Germany, right? And、uh, in the years 1933 till 1936, which were the rise of Hitler's power. 呃，那个时候呢，德国人也特别注重狗的权利。That was also a time、uh, when、uh, people in Germany were very aware of dogs' rights in,、uh, in that country. 那个时候的德国甚至以保公布了一部动物权利保护法。Uh, and even there was a uh, uh, law on、uh, animal protection announced. 所以，它情况跟现在的中国非常相似。So the situation is very similar to the situation in current China. 而我们。没必要去谴责普通的中国人，我们甚至没有必要去谴责那些人为什么关注狗的权利。So actually, there's no need to blame the uh, uh, current uh, people in uh, China or the uh, people in uh, uh, in Germany uh, for uh, for that. 因为在中国这样的国家，关注人权就意味着你有风险。Uh, because In China, currently, it means that uh, uh, if you uh, are uh, uh, ta uh, taking an eye or putting your eye at、uh, human rights, uh, uh, that it's a、uh, risk taking. Just yesterday, my three friends were arrested. 
three days ago. Uh, no, not yesterday. Uh, 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 yes, sorry. Yesterday, uh, my, three of my friends, they were just uh, uh, um, Arrest. uh, arrested. <laughs> Uh还有更多的人因为关注中国的访民的权利因为关注法轮功学员的权利他们很多人被捕 So uh, in China there were people who uh, because for example of the Falun Gong issue or of uh, uh, so-called anti-people uh, anti demonstration uh, who were arrested for these issues 在这种情况下呢，我想，它甚至不是一个个人的修养问题。So and I think this is not a issue of of personal development of personal consciousness。呃，人们总是需要有一定的渠道来表达自己是一个善良的、有爱心的人。呃，people have to have the the channels, open channels, where they can express that they are good and nice people. And if we cannot talk about human rights, then the only thing we can do is to talk about the dog's rights. Well, I have two short questions here in this corner. Hi, uh, I'd like to spe ask specifically about, you know, we heard about the difficult, you know, difficulties that the Czech culture has and Slovak culture, and I'd like to hear actually about independent culture in, in Cuba that you, Antonio, can, can talk about. And specifically, I would also like to know the role of women in that culture. Well, in, in Cuba, now we are facing a really difficult situation in re related with art and activists. Because the Cuba government has found a way to try to get out of the country the artists. Now they, is, they are giving the opportunity to go outside to earn money. And we need to take into account also that in Cuba, people are living in miserable conditions. Then sometimes, uh, I think that the government uh, have been uh, trying to give them the opportunity to improve their life, telling the message, don't get inside of politics, try to do your life, try to do your art, and don't get inside of these problems. And I think that sometimes have been successful in that uh, situation. Also because people are, are involved in politics in Cuba, Sometimes we have not had the vision about the importance of art in the, to push for a change in our nation. Also, people are from outside sometimes don't see how artists can mobilize uh, the society and how they can express and, may, and send a clear message to the, uh, the rest of the society then I, I think that we are facing an important challenge. There have been a lot of uh, uh, friends that in the last time have been leaving the country. They are not now working inside of the island. They are outside. Also, or sometimes they go to the island for a short time and they are trying to waste their time outside, spend their time outside of the, the country. I think that the situation with women also is, uh, is more or less the same. I don't think that there are, in that case, a difference between women and men. But uh, for sure, we need to be focused in this point because in Cuba, music and the rest of the art are really important to mobilize society. And then we need to work on, on that. And I think that Probably we have, uh, yes, he was, yes, well, he was asking, yes, and after we finish here, because it's, I think it's time is over. One more question here in the corner. Hi, my name is Juan. I'm also from Venezuela. I know this forum is about human rights, but I'd like to ask your, point, your opinion about art and ideology. 
uh, and, and the role of artists in democracy, you know. Uh, a lot of writers define ideology like collective identity. And in a transition uh, from a non-democratic uh, regime or state to a democratic regime, you need all sectors of the country talking in the same code. You know, artists, you need politics, you need students, you need work, workers talking on a democratic code. But uh, no matter if you are liberal, you are a social democrat, you are ecologist, you have to talk in the same code. But the artists have an advantage. You don't have any kind of formal organization, you don't have a leader, you don't have a chief. You only paint or write or make any kind of your expression and you put it on, on any kind of discussion. So I want to ask the role of the artist, of the art, in an, ide in an ideology and in a transition from a non-democratic uh, regime to a democratic regime. Um, are you sure this question shouldn't be answered by you, Michal, for example, or for somebody else? I had, uh, my, my experience is that I actually grew up in the United States, as uh, some of you might hear on my accent. Um, uh, yes, well, uh, I mean, there's the, it's obviously the roles are quite different when uh, there's a free society, the, it makes things at first uh, sight, it seems that the role of the artist is easier. In some way, it becomes more complicated. I wouldn't say um, uh, uh, harder, but more complicated uh, in a free society. Of course, uh, you're talking about organizations also, you know, organizing people. And well, that's, uh, I, I guess it, it seems to be, um, uh, the field of art seems to uh, not like uh, the idea of organizing itself too much. This is something that we had uh, from experience in uh, old communist Czechoslovakia, where we had organizations uh, controlling artists. Uh, uh, we had we had several uh, professional groups for writers, for uh, visual artists, for musicians, and and generally this is where the political agenda was kind of pushed onto them to keep them in line, to make sure that these uh, that these people um, are in line with what the communist regime would like, which is something that's going on in China right now. I'm sure Murong would uh, have a lot more to say about this. Um, so. You know, I, I think I think in fact uh, the, the 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 situation uh, after the change is ideal, but more complicated because of course the artists uh, have more responsibility because they have more freedom, and uh, and, in, and of course the the problem with that is uh, that they don't often speak with the same voice. And uh, as you know, as Michal would say, probably the same in Slovakia. I my experience as a visual artist is that uh, if, there is a, if there is a field where, where, where there's, especially in Czech Republic, it's a very small country, you don't have that many artists here. I'm sure Antonio would say the, the similar thing maybe. Uh, there's, it's, it's almost humorous how, how these uh, few artists who are on the scene, how they disagree with each other and how they, how they manage to hate each other and envy each other. It's, it's, it's really, really uh, tragic, you could say. So, so uh, this is, if that answers your question in any way, it, it has its ironies. You know, I think always when you connect ideology and art, it's, it's dangerous and it, it doesn't have a good consequences mostly. Um, I don't know why you think that you need, to, after in the transformation process, you need some one code. You, you don't need one code, you need many codes, you need many discourses, and it's just natural that they come out and spread around the society which is in the rise and which is so full of ideas and uh, so full of identities. What you need is tolerance and a dialogue. And that's, that were the key words of this uh, 25 years ago through the Velvet Revolution, let's have a dialogue with the both sides and many, many different sides. Uh, you have many uh, victims here who were, who were part of it. and. Um, the problem, which is quite surprising for, I think, the whole cultural life these days is that we have this return of ideology into the societies on so many new surprising levels. I mentioned the religious fundamentalism, which became one of the very important discourses, which should not be underestimated, for example, in, in Slovakia, or, or the extreme nationalism, or racism even against, for example, Roma minority, and, and, and many other issues we are dealing with. Uh, so, uh, I don't think art should be ideological. Uh, actually, it should be on the contrary. It should always somehow 
uh, be discomfort, creating discomfort against any ideology. That's what it is for. It's, uh, it should be in some sort of, in my, in my view, it should be always in some sort of opposition against any system, any regime, any uh, ideology. Uh, because art can also lie. It doesn't have to tell the truth. It should seek the truth, but it can use lies and fantasy and all the crea imagination artist has to, to achieve his goals. Uh, but when he mixes it with ideology, some, usually the, his artwork will be worse in the end, I think. Last question. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Do you want it? No, China is not a democratic country, and I'm still think, um, thinking about the dog is right. <laughs> okay, hello. Um, I would like to thank you all for the speeches and everything, and um, I would like to say that I'm very sorry that uh, Mr. Daniel left us because most of my questions were for him, but uh, I would like then to transfer my questions to uh, Mr. Uh, Petru. Um, because I, I think he could maybe be, be the one that could have answers since uh, you are now working here in Czech Republic, I guess, uh, the most. Uh, and my question is, uh, what is your, well, let's say subjective personal opinion on um, a relation between uh, Czech Republic and European Union uh, regarding the issue of culture and uh, let's say Ministry of Culture, how uh, much is it uh, connected with the uh, democracy and how much uh, financially it's supporting artists, uh, art in Czech Republic? Um, I, I, can, I can tell you um, not exact data uh, to this, but I can, I can give you an, a general idea of, what, of how I see the situation. Uh, we're, I'm pleased to say that Daniel Herman is, is probably the, the, the best Minister of Culture we've had for a long time, uh, uh, at least uh, in the sense that uh, we've had really bad ones. <laughs> I mean, some of those people were, were a farce, people who were just not even qualified to, to, uh, to, to take the job. Um, we're talking about actors, for example, uh, people who had no idea. And, um, well, uh, it's too bad because, uh, in fact, there's this, uh, there's this anecdote that um, um, in the, during the, the former government, not the last, not the government we have now, but the last ones, uh, there was uh, this, uh, um, two parties talking about the ministers that they're going to have and, and then uh, during the discussion, which lasted until late hours, they completely forgot about the Minister of Culture. There's just nobody mentioned him. And then, <laughs> and then they, they, they uh, quickly decided that, okay, okay, we'll give this to, we'll give this to this, um, um, uh, it's part of the party top zero nine is the mayors, they're called the mayors. And this is the mayors from various cities in Czech Republic. They, they have a strong lobby and they were part of this party. So they gave, gave the Ministry of Culture to the mayors, saying that, okay, you can just have them and put anybody there. And, uh, and they, 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 they placed this um, um, school teacher called, uh, 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 her name is Hanakova. I don't wanna really name not to insult people, but, but she was totally incompetent uh, for the job. I mean, I would be incompetent for the job. I wouldn't want it. You know, I mean, one has to have some kind of managerial uh, capabilities, but also one has to have a vision, and this had not happened. I think this is what um, Mr. Herman hopefully has. But uh, the, 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 the biggest problem here with the culture is that, uh, it, this was why I said the anecdote, that people forgot about the Minister of Culture because nobody really cares. And here we don't really, uh, we don't, uh, we're not even getting close to the 1% for culture, which is the European, um, uh, prerequisite or that is the goal that European countries should have 1% of the budget of the GNP uh, for culture. I think we're somewhere around 0 0.4 or 0 0.5 but this is where I'm not certain. And, um, and this is symptomatical. This is a, a problem which is, uh, uh, most of this money, by the way, goes for, uh, for fixing up um, the old Prague, you know, because of course this is, uh, we're creating a postcard out of this city and this is what, uh, what really attracts uh, uh, most of the money from the budget, and for example, because I'm a visual artist, uh, a couple of years back, uh, um, I remember that there was the budget for for supporting visual arts uh, exhibitions, catalogs, printing for a visual artist. It was something under, under 10 million crowns 
which is probably a lot less than, how, uh, than, than the cars that are bought for the Czech president every year. So, so you know, I mean, the, the, the situation is quite, uh, quite uh, tragic, I would say. But, but then uh, artists are free to, you know, to, to, uh, to fight this and to do what they want. This is what, uh, this is what my, um, my idea about, you know, uh, um, engaging into the scene was. And, and I think you can do what you want, really. It's up to you. So, uh, but unfortunately, yes, there's a lot to be improved. Well, any other comment? Well, unfortunately, we done with the questions. Um, are running out of the well if you want to something short please yeah. just one one sentence on what you said uh, look here um, you say the uh, the majority of the budget is used to um, well refurbish prague to make it more attractive for the not only person. prague i mean uh, well okay let's say a good, good deal of it yeah and and um, this is the, the, the huge misunderstanding of, of most politicians, yeah, of most um, e economic um, scientists, yeah, the role of art, art creation in the GDP. Yeah. Um, just, it's very easy. Uh, two, three uh, hundred years ago, hundred years ago, uh, under Franz Josef, yeah, your ex-master, yeah, uh, uh, there was a huge investment in the art creation. And today, Today, Czech Republic or the, the, the city of Prague is uh, benefiting from the investment of 100 years ago. Yeah? And today, there's almost no uh, money left for art creation of today. Yeah? And this is a, a huge uh, misunderstanding of, of the whole economic uh, uh, framework architecture by uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, European politicians. You know, just maybe a, one of the short remark, short, short uh, uh, answer to this. Uh, it's not everywhere like this, and I think in many European countries there is a huge discussion about the cultural industry. That actually there are many countries where, where cu culture is contributing to the budget of the state much more than it is getting from the, from this budget. So that actually the creative industries are helping economies, creating jobs. Like our neighboring city from Bratislava is Vienna, where every sixth person is working in the creative field somehow. And in the whole Austria, it's every tenth person. So it's creating tens of thousands of jobs and helping actually Austrian economy. So I think even this is something what our country, small middle European countries should learn from maybe from more, more, more experienced governments, that there is a way how to connect these two things that you don't have to only expect the money from the state, but we, we are also taxpayers, we artists, we are also part of the economic system, we are also creating jobs and so on. So, and this, we should maybe turn it around. Sometimes I think that artists are supporting this state in many ways. Thank you, Jacob. Do you have any comment to close the panel? No? Anything more? Anything more? Do you want to, uh, that's it? Well, uh, before to close the panel, I want just to mention three points that I think have been around all the time. First, the last one, the necessity of support for art in the States. We need that the politicians take more attention about art and how art can influence society in a good way. The second one also is the importance that intellectual and artists be involved in social issues and civic issues. This is really something important to try to, to in many times, to break the controls. And the next one also is how important it is to mix human rights and art. I think, well, probably these are three key points that we have been talking today. And I want to thank you all for being here and the panelists. And I hope also that we all enjoyed the Forum 2000. And thank you for coming here today. Thank you.